The Germans favored the 75mm infantry howitzer, capable of being broken down into six loads of 165 pounds. It fired a 12-pound high-explosive shell. Like all howitzers, its short barrel could go vertical to lob shells over mountain obstacles, or it could go horizontal for ground combat. A howitzer is a combination of a gun and a mortar. A mortar lofts around at a very high trajectory. A gun fires in a very flat trajectory. A howitzer, you can do both. The lethality of this weapon, combined with the impenetrable mountain passes, made life hell on the Italian front. Italy's mountain spine favored defense, and the Germans fought tenaciously for each crag and peak. Every hill village became a citadel, every cave a machine gun nest. Removing the Germans would be a task for specialized units. Units like America's 10th Mountain Division. This is the story of one of America's most unusual fighting outfits, the 10th Mountain Division. Before World War II, the U.S. didn't have Arctic or mountain troops. They hadn't needed any. But now, with Hitler rampaging through Europe, they had to evolve. The Army Chief of Staff gave an order to create a 1,000-man experimental unit, and its purpose was to put to, to a test this whole concept of mountain soldiers in our Army. The 10th recruited proficient skiers and climbers. As skiing was an expensive, elitist sport in the U.S., most of the division were highly educated college men. We had one of the highest IQ divisions, if not the highest IQ division, in the whole army. These men would need more than just brains when they went up against the Germans in Italy. They had to train their bodies to survive on mountains and in freezing temperatures. They had to be trained differently to operate in sort of a sub-Arctic environment. Otherwise, they'd die. The tent would also have to fight in impossible conditions. Waging war on skis and fighting up mountains is no cakewalk. They had access to a knowledge that allowed them to put terrain on their side rather than the mountains becoming uh, yet another enemy. The 10th Mountain Division were ready. It was time to kick the Germans out of Italy. February 1945, and the 10th Mountain Division are preparing to assault Mount Belvedere. Up above them, the German artillery are trained in on every accessible path. It's got all the makings of a massacre. U.S. commanders are forced to make an extraordinary decision. The 10th are ordered to empty the bullets from their weapons and told to advance on German positions in total silence. We were told not to load our weapons because if we fired either accidentally or on purpose, it would indicate they were under attack. It's a ballsy plan. If the 10th can sneak up the mountain undetected, they'll be so close to the Germans that their artillery and guns will be useless. The soldiers didn't really like the idea of going into battle without the ability to shoot back but the important piece was to be silent. So we were moving with unloaded weapons at night in unfamiliar country. The Germans were oblivious to the men of the tent as they silently edged towards their positions. It was a gutsy play that could have ended in tragedy, but the boys of the tent had the right stuff. Loading their weapons at the last moment, they tore into the German lines. With the 10th Mountain Division coming up silently at night, they were able to surprise the German troops and boot them off the hill. When the 10th were allowed to attack fully loaded, they were even deadlier. One of their favorite weapons was the standard issue grease gun. During the Second World War, most of the contending forces produced a short, stubby, fully automatic, pistol-caliber submachine gun. 
and in the American case, it was the M3 grease gun. A fully automatic submachine gun with a 30 round mag. It was good for close in mountain fighting. It had lots of stopping power because of that big 4-5 round. And it was a weapon which, at close range, had few equals. Hugh Evans used his to devastating effect during the Battle of Belvedere, when the loss of a close friend made him see red. I came upon my platoon sergeant. He had been shot through the chest, and he died more or less in my arms. I was angry. I was really angry. Lost in a violent rage, Hugh ran toward the German lines. He lobbed a grenade into a trench, killing two men. In the confusion, he found another German aiming straight at him. A German popped up in front of me, and I had my grease gun at ready and I killed him, and then ran down and jumped into that trench. And there were two other Germans in that trench manning a, a light machine gun, and they surrendered to me. Assuming these feats must have been achieved by more than one man, many of the Germans turned and fled. Some of them tried to escape running down the hill, and I turned their own machine gun on them. Before he knew it, half the German division started surrendering to him. Germans came up with their hands from all over the place. Their foxholes being so well camouflaged, you couldn't see them. Hugh and his grease gun had just pulled off a miracle. Mount Belvedere would become a legend in mountain warfare. It became obvious to both American and German commanders that the 10th was no ordinary combat outfit.